Okay guys, in this video today we're going to be talking about Polkadot and why owning and hodling 1000 Polkadot might be one of those best decisions you've ever made. Now guys, as we get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, do go ahead and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you're new, then do subscribe, hit the bell, tap on all notifications and you won't miss another update. Okay then guys, let's start off at the beginning. What is Polkadot? Polkadot is a cryptocurrency project that seeks to power the decentralized future of the internet. This is often referred to as Web 3.0. It is interoperable with other blockchains inside and outside of cryptocurrency. It allows for the creation of smart contracts and new blockchains and, of course, tokens that go along with it. It makes it possible for blockchains to exchange information. It is also upgradable without the requirement of any hard forks. And the protocol is governed by those who hold DOT, uh, of which is Polkadot's native cryptocurrency. So Polkadot is a project by the Web3 Foundation, a Swiss non-profit based uh, in Switzerland's Crypto Valley. The Web3 Foundation commissions UK based parity technologies to develop and maintain the Polkadot network. And of course, you know, Dr. Gavin Wood uh, is to Polkadot what Charles Hoskinson is to Cardano. He is the co-founder of both Web3 Foundation and Parity Technologies and is consequently the main developer of the Polkadot network. Polkadot is built uh, using Substrate, a blockchain um, building tool developed by Parity Technologies. But how does Polkadot work? Well, let's go into a little bit of detail, but not too much. It's important that you do your own research at the end of the day as well. So let's just go through top line how Polkadot actually works. So Polkadot is easily one of the most complicated cryptocurrencies in existence. While we would uh, normally say that we have a way of explaining it to you in layman's terms, um, but there really is no way to explain Polkadot without uh, eventually falling into uh, the technical language and all of those components that go with it. So Polkadot um, is quite literally has a series of articles dedicated to explaining all the ins and the outs. And it's important that you do your own research and get into all of that good stuff. Um, so let's take a look at it at a glance. Polkadot is an ecosystem of blockchains. The core Polkadot blockchain is called the Relay Chain. Um, blockchains that are connected to the Relay Chain are known as parachains, and that's an important thing to note. These parachains can have their own tokens, consensus mechanisms, and even their own governance structures. As mentioned previously, the Relay Chain is built using Substrate. And any parachains which are built using Substrate can easily connect to the Relay chain. Any external blockchain, such as Bitcoin or Ethereum, require a bridge to connect to the Relay chain. So, guys, do your own research and dig into more about how Polkadot works in more detail, um, because there's quite an extensive amount of information there readily available, and it is worth understanding. But at a glance, ultimately, Polkadot is in, in itself is a relay chain and those parachains, those uh, those additional blockchains connect to the relay chain. And again, those parachains can have their own tokens, consensus mechanisms, and of course, governance structures. Now that we are talking about Polkadot, it's also important that we acknowledge Kasuma. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, Kasuma is an entirely separate cryptocurrency project. It was launched to test the various elements of Polkadot in a real world environment. Like Polkadot, Kasuma is built using Substrate and features its own native KSM token. Now, Kasuma is basically an unaudited version of Polkadot, and it will continue to exist um, even well after Polkadot has been well established. And it's ultimately there to test or to become a test bed for developers who may want to test their dApps or blockchains before actually launching them on the Polkadot ecosystem. So when Polkadot's mainnet was uh, initially rolled out, it was effectively the same as it is now with two major differences. So DOT tokens could only actually be issued and staked. Um, they couldn't be traded. And the Web3 Foundation um, was the only entity which was able to function on the network. It produced all the blocks and verified every single transaction.
Now, recently, uh, I think it was the August launch, it involved removing the sudo protocol, um, which basically meant that uh, once removed, it gave full control over to the DOT holders. And basically, anyone who owned Polkadot's uh, native cryptocurrency uh, DOT, uh, those DOT tokens were made tradable. And um, basically, the first proposal was passed to divide the valuation of DOT by 100. Okay, so some pretty cool stuff has been going on most recently. Now, obviously, since that time, Polkadot is technically a decentralized autonomous organization, a DAO, um, a protocol which is entirely uh, governed by the community, which is which will fundamentally determine its future uh, development milestones. So a pretty you know important thing to acknowledge here is obviously the importance of Kasuma when it comes to Polkadot and obviously the milestones that Polkadot has also achieved most recently as well. Now, let's go back to where we were at the beginning when we mentioned parachains. Now, parachains are very important when it comes to the Polkadot ecosystem. So um, as this whole video is about discussing the potential of Polkadot for the long term hodl, then it's also important to acknowledge what parachains are. So let's get into what the this infrastructure actually means. Um, so let's briefly discuss the up and coming rollout of the parachain infrastructures and the already active slot auctions on the Kasuma network. Um, so basically, as previously mentioned, uh, parachains constitute the foundational layer of blockchain architecture um, and are all those diverse layer one blockchains operating in parallel with that central relay chain. And um, parachains additionally represent Polkadot's vision of a future interoperable blockchain ecosystem uh, based on dynamic applications, flexibility, and obviously cross-chain um, compossibility. So what you end up with here with parachains is this ability to connect to that relay chain, as we mentioned earlier. And this is an incredibly important thing because ultimately to be very successful in this particular niche area in the future, it is critical that these blockchains are interoperable with each other. This is why you are starting to see so many bridges being made between so many different projects. Harmony One have been doing an absolutely fantastic job with bridges recently. You can see this on the Cardano ecosystem with bridge talk uh, and uh, discussions around potentially bridging to people like Litecoin, Bitcoin, etc. Right? Obviously, the EVM for all of those currently running on the Ethereum network just to port over to a different uh, blockchain system running the Ethereum virtual machine, but also bridges over to Ethereum themselves as well. Ultimately, the future is very much interoperable. And um, Polkadot have made this quite clear with their parachain slots, the auctions, and obviously the ability to connect to that relay chain. So while Polkadot's founder, Dr. Gavin Wood, is yet to provide a specific date as to when Polkadot will uh, begin launching those slot auctions, a few projects um, such as um, Akela Networks, um, you know, just to name one, uh, among the strongest candidates to, to basically you know, secure an allocation as parachains on the network. And uh, again, you can hit Twitter up for this and you can check a lot of the, the tweets that have been made most recently. Um, but basically, Akala uh, has won the first parachain slot auction on the Polkadot test network. Um, so that's a fantastic milestone. And again, you're starting to see a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and basically to continue building on the Polkadot ecosystem because the future is definitely something that uh, is going to be interoperable. And to have these slots connecting into that relay chain is critical, uh, at least from a Polkadot ecosystem point of view and also from an interoperable perspective. So I think it was on March of 2021 this year that Akala actually announced that they had won that first slot. So definitely worth checking that out if you're interested in what they're doing and uh, what they're building on the Polkadot ecosystem. Now, parachains on consumers. This is something else that we obviously need to talk about. So Polkadot's sister chain that we just briefly mentioned, um, or the Canary Network, depending on how you want to kind of refer to it as, it's the test network. Kasuma began rolling out its first parachain slot auction, um, which uh, resulted in Akala's sister chain, Kasuma Network, winning the first allocation on the KSM network. Um, so again, some fantastic things have been going on there. Uh, so definitely check out Kasuma as well um, and check out uh, Karura um, as uh, basically officially secured the, the first 
public parachain slot on the Kasuma network uh, as well. It is important to note that parachains uh, are the last piece of core functionality to be delivered. Um, and as outlined in the Polkadot white paper, um, and will allow the project to basically realize and achieve its scalable multi-chain architecture. So absolutely critical stuff going on. And once this uh, parachain architecture gets across the line, um, ultimately Polkadot is going to be one of those absolutely massive uh, ecosystems of the future. So parachains are currently being tested on the consumer network in order to study their application and behavior in real economic environments. And after a period of considerable auditing, testing, optimization, these parachains will be readily uh, are ready for deployment on the Polkadot ecosystem. So let's get back to the topic of the video. Why Polkadot is, uh, you know, an absolute behemoth of a project and why hodling 1000 Polkadot could be one of those fantastic decisions that the future self thanks you for. So Polkadot is a cryptocurrency um, that checks every box, regardless of the list that you are using. It has the vision for the future, right? And um, it's basically got a superstar team behind it as well. It has that solid foundation that is needed. Um, it has notable partnerships. It has reputable uh, exchange listings. Um, and lots of retail investment. It's got a reasonable market cap. It has the scalability, uh, at least it plans to in the future. Um, the upgradable, um, you know, without requiring hard forks. Um, the transaction speeds as high as 1 million transactions per second. So there's a lot going on when it comes to Polkadot. And ultimately for a reasonable investment in 2021, could be worth a substantial amount more in the next five to 10 years. And we often refer to on this channel, 2025 and 2030 as two key milestones for this space. And this is for multiple different reasons. One of the main factors is CBDCs and the recent development of these across central banks around the world. We have studied many project plans from many different banks in many different jurisdictions and ultimately a lot of those CBDCs are looking to be launched by 2025. This would basically usher in mass adoption of cryptocurrencies even if the masses do not realize they are using cryptography. With that being said, 2030 is the seriously mature market and we should be in multi-trillion dollar market capitalizations for many of these projects. So getting in in these really early stages for now uh, in 2021 with projects with such huge capacity for future growth and development and also the ability to see that vision of future proofing with high transaction throughput with the ability to have that scalability elements added in with the parachain auctions and para threads, which we haven't even really spoken about in this video. Polkadot is definitely poised and ready to be one of the serious competitors in this space and definitely does deserve to be a top 10 cryptocurrency, along with many of these other third generation blockchains in the space as well. One thing that you might find useful um, will be having that or, or you might be struggling with is basically understanding Polkadot and it's important that you do your own research and obviously take a different approach to it as well. Um, ultimately, um, parachains attached to Polkadot's relay chain can be linked to ERC-20 smart contracts on Ethereum. They can have their own consensus mechanisms and they can have their own tokens and tend to have a specific purpose. Um, think of Ethereum-based projects like uh, Ren VM or even Chainlink, right? So for me personally, I think that uh, Polkadot has some serious potential in the future. And I think that uh, investing in a thousand coins during 2021 or even earlier when uh, Polkadot was seriously undervalued would have had a significant impact on the future um, or on your portfolios. And also holding that for long term could see a significant rise in the Polkadot value uh, over the next five to 10 years. Now, obviously, most recently, Polkadot's chart has been progressively moving up. If we actually zoom out, we obviously have had our... Um, 
fourth wave correction this is the correction that bitcoin has taken and along with the rest of the space the expectations for 2021 will still be to rise up to these higher areas for polkadot heading up to about 160 or so dollars from its current position of 12 dollars. so right now um, you know it's a fantastic buy still um, I think there's still opportunities to, to capitalize on this. But again, during the bear market is going to be a fantastic opportunity to gain dollar cost average, better positions with Polkadot, acquire, in my opinion, at least 1,000. It can obviously be much more if you need it to be. And I think the future valuation of Polkadot is going to be significantly higher than what most people will believe it to be. So guys, hopefully you have found this video useful and informative. If you have, then do go ahead and hit that like button for me. I really do appreciate that. If you're new, Make sure you've subscribed, hit the bell, tapped on all, and you'll uh, never miss another update. Guys, with this said, done, and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.